Run to the back of the radio. We uh, have our battery storage spots here. We're running two 18650s in series. So this brings it up to a 2S radio to give it a little bit of extra juice for that external module bay, which plugs in right here and then just mounts in this place. There are 10 screws holding it together. Number double lot Phillips head. There's 10 screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to speed up through this. You don't need to watch it. By the way, you can make most of your gimbal adjustments just from back here. You don't need to actually disassemble the radio to do it, but we're getting in there so we can see how she works. All right, there she is. She's opened up. We can go ahead and disconnect the two sliders. Just pull on these cables, pop them off of there. And then we can disconnect these two cables here. Just get in there with your fingernails and give them a little, little pop. There we go. And here's our antenna cable for our Express ORS module. We can pull that off. Now, if you're inside of yours, you're gonna see something a little bit different on mine than there is on your radio. And that is this white wire. It is going to my, my right hand momentary switch. And it's going to this little itty bitty pad here. <clears throat> this little pad right here. And what this is, this is the fix going forward that Jumper needs to do to make this radio so you have a secondary way to flash the internal module. What this wire is, is it is activating this boot button right here. This puts the Express LRS module into boot mode so you can flash firmware to it. Now that it's tied to your momentary switch, instead of tearing the radio apart to push this button, all you have to do, hold down that switch and start the process. So that is the fix. Let's go ahead and get this guy off of here. Having that wire there does make disassembly just a little bit more difficult. And that's your external power board. That's uh, that's for your external module right there. Put that aside. We don't need anything else in there. Here's our Express LRS module. Now, remember, this is one watt. Most, most Express LRS transmitters that are 500 watts plus, that are 500 milliwatts plus, have a fan on them. This has no fan it just has a heat sink it's a fairly good size heat sink it's nice there's a little pin out here if you do need to flash your internal module and uh, you're left with only using FTDI using some DuPont connectors it is pretty easy to do I'll put a link to the video where I show you how to update the internal module when the, the Wi-Fi flashing fails you can find that card up in the, the corner here or down in the video description Go ahead and pull more wires off of here. And we see we're left with our gimbals under here. Now, I'm not a gimbal snob, but I do know when some gimbals are better than others. And these ones, uh, the throttle at least has like a, almost like a clunk to it, like right about there, it gets stiff. Um, something I've done in the past to kind of clean that up is to just put a little bit of this Niagel 767A on the contact points, and this makes a huge difference. I'll put a link to this stuff in the video description if you want to pick yourself up a uh, lifetime supply of Niagel. It's also the stuff that people were slathering all of their frames at one point. Let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. So here we have our uh, menu page and, and return buttons. Uh, they're all soldered to one daughter board, uh, which this will be pretty nice. If the buttons do fail, you're just going to end up probably buying a new board. This can't possibly be much. And it is nice they're putting um, a nice elastic on there to try to keep the stresses down on these wires while they're wiggling around in there so they don't break. So good attention to deal, detail there. And here come the buttons. Unlike a lot of the FR Sky radios where they have uh, molded in pegs and, you have, and they're basically melted in place. These are removable, so you don't have to, uh, you know, it's not a one-time destruction to get them out. And here we have our rolling click, click wheel. Um, nothing too fancy, nothing to write home about, but again, um, you see this last deck on there. 
decent design. And here's our right side momentary button and our three position switch. These, uh, these aren't bad. I don't know how long they're gonna last. They're pretty small, but um, it's a cheap radio. So if this dies, you'd probably just replace this or just replace the whole radio. And here's the other side. Nothing crazy. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pull out a gimbal. So here is one of the um, nothing fancy to write home about. You can see from the manufacturing process, there is, you know, these are all magnets in here and the pickup here measures a line of flux coming off of the magnets. You can see there's, there's some debris, some metal shavings attached to them. Uh, it's not gonna, it's not the end of the world, but it just shows that it's not, you know, it's not a, Know, a perfectly environmentally sealed environment these things get put together in, if that makes any sense. They are quad ball bearing. There's four ball bearings, there's two on each axis. And, uh, you know, it doesn't feel terrible. It's definitely plastic. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of this here now gel. And we're just gonna get a tiny little bit of it, way more than I need. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit the contact surfaces right there and we'll let that work itself in and now that gimbal feels like a million bucks it really truly does make that big of a difference and there's the other gimbal no real contact points to lube up on this one so not too worried about it And here's your main board with uh, the display. If you, uh, here's your RTC battery. So if you're getting that RTC battery low warning, this is the battery you're gonna need to replace. It is a uh, CR1220. We have ARM STM F205 chipset in there. Nice tidy little board. This radio does come with an SD card. That's very nice of them. Your display is part of this board. I doubt that they would sell just the display. Here's all your buttons for that six button row at the top of the radio and your trim switches, which are surface mount soldered to the board. So again, if you damage one of these, you're probably not gonna get a replacement. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm prying up on the stick and they're not coming off. I'm not gonna pry too hard, but there is your main board with display. Now, some people who got like review units, you saw they have a uh, replacement part for the top of the, the radio here, which gives you just like an SMA connector so you can attach an antenna. And they're saying the radios come with them. The radio does not come with that, or at least mine did not. And here it is. And there is, there's our antenna. That's it. A lot of waste of space just for this little PCB antenna. Which is just held in with some double-sided tape. Um, yeah. That antenna could actually be probably a lot smaller than that. But, you know, that's it. That's everything that's inside the Jumper G Pro. Oh crap, now I gotta put it all back together. <laughs>